How to reprogram your subconscious mind with self-talk. What I've done is I've taken a handful of quotes from Neville Goddard, and I wanted to discuss this concept of self-talk, and specifically reprogramming your subconscious mind with it. Now, we all have conversations with ourselves, whether we are aware of it or not. And what I've done is I've created this six-step process that will help you evolve your self-talk. Now, Neville says, when a man discovers the creative power of inner talking, he will realize his function and his mission in life. Then he can act to a purpose. Without such knowledge, he acts unconsciously. Everything is a manifestation of our mental conversations which go on in us without our being aware of them. But as civilized beings, we must become aware of them and act with a purpose. So thus, the first thing we have to do if we want to uncover our self-talk and evolve our self-talk to be in alignment with what we want to create is first determine what we want to create. And what that's what I call the definite chief aim. It's a specific goal, a specific outcome, a purpose. And the purpose is as important as the journey. It is during the journey where we uncover our self-talk. It is during the journey where we also apply what we're learning here to evolve our self-talk to not only help us bring forth what we desire, but do it so in a way that's in harmony to create a more harmonious bridge of incidents leading to the desired outcome. What has been impressed in our subconscious mind has usually been from past programming that may or may not be in alignment with our definite chief aim. The good news is through contrast and what we react to, we can identify this programming, change the programming within via self-talk or any of the subconscious mind modalities that I refer to, which if you want to know more about those, the link is in the description, to evolve the programming within to externalize that programming as people, environment, circumstance, and information that is in harmony and related from a perspective of joy, bliss, and ease towards our definite chief aim. So what is your definite chief aim? Well, let's create a scenario here. Perhaps you have a business, and your business is you're a fitness consultant. Now, what you want to do is create a business and a definite chief aim that is in harmony and in alignment with the life you want to live. So the way we do it is by creating a definite chief aim purpose statement, such as, I have a successful fitness business that generates $120,000 a year from various products and services that I create that are in benefit to others. I innovate and market accordingly to attract large volumes of individuals who are ready to receive the products and services that I create that are beneficial for them by multiplying my quality of service, quantity of service, and spirit of service. The way I choose to receive this $120,000 is through my definite chief aim of this successful business. I believe in the product and services that I create and offer, and there are infinite individuals that are ready to receive the products and services that I create, and thus I attract the ones that are required to be attracted to what I offer that will be a externalization of my beliefs and assumptions of how I interpret reality on my way to creating the success of $120,000 in my fitness business. People who show up in my life are exact reflections and externalizations of who I am. Thus, my clients are ones that I am. So I choose to evolve myself through my self-talk to become that what I am, which is the reflection externalized as clients and their externalized as me, service provider. Now, the definite chief aim that's created from this perspective needs to be impressed in the subconscious mind. So that's the second step. Neville says, Imagination plus faith is the stuff out of which we can make the world. We are told all things were made in this manner. Now, imagination, what you can imagine, will impress the subconscious mind when done in a state akin to sleep or with repetition, to externalize as people, environment, circumstance, and information represented in the bridge of incidents leading to the externalization of what you have impressed on the subconscious mind. 
Now, whatever shows up for you during the bridge of incidents on your journey is also going to reveal to you your self-talk because whatever you experience, you communicate with yourself about in your mind, self-talk. What we're interested in is the self-talk that is in alignment with our definite chief aim and continuing nurturing this self-talk so that it externalizes accordingly. What we're also interested in is any self-talk that we call negative self-talk or self-talk that is from a lower level on the emotional guidance scale, which I'll talk about in a moment. Because this is where we can evolve the programming within through self-talk and as a result have positive self-talk and uplifting and empowering self-talk within, which externalizes in relation to this specific definite chief aim as conversations with others, prospects, clients, vendors, business partners, etc., to create a spirit of harmony-based relationship between you and them to make the creating this successful business one of joy, bliss, and ease. So we impress this end result on our subconscious mind. So perhaps you might imagine in your mind receiving income from various sources in your bank account, looking at the statements, communicating with your friend or your business partner or your mastermind about how you have created the success in the spirit of harmony by impressing your subconscious mind with the vision of what you are experiencing right now. In other words, the exact scene that you are imagining in your subconscious mind right now of explaining of how one day you created this is impressed on your subconscious mind through your imaginal act as the end result that happens after you create the success, after you have created the $120,000. Now, as you impress the subconscious mind with this imaginal act on a daily basis, or as needed, you'll find yourself orienting in the direction of your definite chief aim and then moving on to step number three. Here all we do is we observe and write down what we react to and we reflect upon using the emotional guidance scale. Neville says, talking to oneself is a habit everyone indulges in. We could no more stop talking to ourselves than we could stop eating and drinking. All that we can do is control the nature and the direction of our inner conversations. Most of us are totally unaware of the fact that our inner conversations are the causes of the circumstances of our life. Thus, we want to observe, not judge or shame, but write down the different conversations we have with ourselves, just statements of what we're conversing about with ourselves that are related to what we call the downward spiral elements of the emotional guidance scale. So anything related to pessimism, disappointment, worry, fear, anger, revenge, blame, jealousy, hatred, insecurity. We don't judge ourselves. We remember that this is past programming that we've learned from people, environment, circumstance, and information from our past that is recreating itself on the bridge of incidents. And what we want to do is uh, create a harmonious bridge of incidents related to our definite chief aim so we can create the success from a place of joy, bliss, and ease. Now, if you write these aspects down, then we move on to the next phase. At the end of the day, we review the aspects. Neville says, change your conception of yourself and you will automatically change the world in which you live. Do not try to change people. They are only messengers telling you who you are. Revalue yourself and they will confirm the change. All change happens within and it is identified through the mental conversations that we have about ourselves and others. Now, because we are working in the entrepreneurial space and creating success in business, we want to observe the conversations that we have about others related to our definite chief aim, which is the entrepreneurial success. In this case, the $120,000 at the end of the year. What are we saying about our clients, our prospects, our partners, our vendors, the marketplace? reveals what we are creating. If we continue to have conversations that are from the emotional guidance scale about these people, from those perspectives, we will constantly be recreating it in the outer world, breaking our flow and creating more obstacles, or so they will appear as obstacles, by our own thinking in the outer world. 
Now, to help us evolve our self-talk surrounding any kind of lower-level emotional guidance scale-based elements surrounding people or environment or circumstance or information, we can reflect back on the Robert Diltz model. Neville says, a man's mental conversations attracts his life. As long as there is no change in his inner talking, the personal history of the man remains the same. To attempt to change the world before we change our inner talking is to struggle against the very nature of things. Man can go around and round the same circle of disappointments and misfortunes, not seeing them as caused by his own negative inner talking, but as caused by others. Not seeing them as caused by his own negative talking, but rather as caused by others. And this will end up bringing you in circles. Now, when we take the Robert Diltz model, and if you want to know more about the Robert Diltz model, I put a link in the description, video I did on it, and reflect upon it, we can understand what self-talk-based conversation elements we can discuss with ourselves to evolve the programming within. And as a result of evolving the programming within, what you will notice is that we'll have a lot more harmonious self-talk conversations about ourselves, about others, about people, environment, circumstance, and information. So we have vision, identity, values and beliefs, capabilities, behaviors, and elements. Which of these elements need to evolve? What do we believe and assume about our vision? Is it possible or not possible? Our identity, in other words, our self-image, our current self and our higher self. Values and beliefs, what do we believe that is in alignment or misalignment that we are externalizing and projecting on to people, environment, circumstance, and information? What capabilities do we need to develop? This right here is a capability, reprogramming your subconscious mind with self-talk. You have created this as an externalization of what is within you to help you create your definite chief aim. You wanted a way to figure this out, so it externalized as this video. Everything is externalized based on consciousness. Consciousness creates based on consciousness within. If you're looking for something, so the saying goes, Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and shall be opened unto you. You will find it. If you believe, you will find it. That's a value and belief right there. If you don't have that value or belief about reality, then perhaps that's something you want to have a conversation about with yourself to create. See, you've either learned your self-talk from others, movies, books, information, the media, through conversations with your friends, family, business partners, through experience in life, or you have learned it via the conversation with your inner voice, which speaks in the spirit of harmony, which possibility, which speaks based on outcome, based on the definite chief aim, based on the feeling of the wish fulfilled. So with reflecting upon the Robert Diltz model, and I recommend what you do is carve out 30 minutes to an hour at the end of the day to engage in evolving the self-talk that you've had throughout the day that was in correlation to elements in the emotional guidance scale, the lower level, otherwise known as a downward spiral. This is a form of revision. Okay, I recommend you watch the video I did on pruning shears of revision by Neville Goddard. I'll put a link in the description. It's a form of revision, going back to those conversations that you're having throughout the day and having them again. Neville says, speech is the image of mind. Therefore, to change his mind, he must first change his speech. By, by speech is meant those mental conversations we carry with ourselves. Speech is the image of mind. The universe is mental. We talk about this when we discuss the book, The Kabbalion. All is mind. Now, what you want is a state of mind that externalizes as the representation of the success that you want. And this is revealed by the inner conversations, what we say when we talk to ourselves. So now what we're saying is at the end of the day, we're going to have a conscious conversation for 30 minutes to 60 minutes. You can either sit down and have this conversation with yourself in your mind, or you could talk aloud to yourself in a mirror, or you could do this in your mind with, as you fall asleep. Having a conversation about what you have noted that you have been reactive to, that is five sensory data elements in which you assign from the world within downward spiral emotional reactions, knowing that the outer world is an externalization of the inner world, so we evolve the programming within. 
And perhaps you did not get that programming in by conscious choice, but it is there. So now we have to release it so we can create the success that we want from a place of joy, bliss, and ease. So here are some checklist items that you want to reflect upon when having an inner conversation at the end of the night or the end of the day. Is it a spirit of harmony based? So is now the new self-talk going to be about benefit for you, others, and divine and evolution? Or is it going to be benefit for you while not being in benefit to the other person? Knowing that the outer world's a reflection of the inner world, so if you make it not about the benefit to the other person, then it will externalize because do unto others as you wish done unto yourself. If you speak highly about yourself and you speak angry or from a perspective of anger to another person, then you are doing it onto yourself and it will externalize as people treating you from a place of anger. So thus we want to keep our self-talk from a perspective of spirit of harmony. Since speech is the image of mind, we want to change our speech so we can change our mind and then have the mind externalized in reality of the representation of what is in the consciousness of mind. Is the conversation with yourself, the self-talk, one of flow, easygoing? Is it a personal one-on-one -on -one tone like a good friend? Is it personal and honest to you? Does it uplift your spirits and raise your consciousness? So what does that mean, raise your consciousness? Well, a very simple way of looking at it is your ability to track effect in the outer world based on the cause within as you continue to have these self-talk conversations with yourself in your own mind in a way that uplifts and inspires you are able to see more possibilities and opportunities than you have never been able to see before to overcome any challenges that you might have. It's important to remember that we cannot a lot of times solve the problem in the same level of consciousness in which we created it. So thus the self-talk evolves our consciousness, uplifts our consciousness, till we find the solution. The higher the consciousness, the higher the and the easier the ability to find and execute upon what will be the solution. In David Hawkins' work, he talks about levels of consciousness, which to me is very related to the emotional guidance scale. I recommend you watch the videos I did on letting go and power versus force. In the higher states of consciousness, it's easier to materialize your dreams, manifest your desired outcomes because it's operating from a place of unconditional love. And unconditional love means what is externalized is a reflection of the unconditional love within, which is the desired outcome. Is it speaking to your emotional hot points? And by emotional hot points, I'm talking about the elements that you uncovered on the emotional guidance scale. In a way, you understand yourself, realize that this information came from past programming, and you're evolving it within yourself. Are you experiencing a subconscious stream of conversation? Do you trust yourself more? And do you receive anything to act upon? Many of my best insights and action items were generated through self-talk conversations with myself about the different experiences that I have every day. So now let's reflect back on the example of the definite chief aim that we've created in this video and demonstrate how we would apply this. Perhaps on the bridge of incidents, you realize that prospecting and acquiring clients is an important element of building your business because you've created the products and services in your fitness business but yet you have fear of picking up the phone or sending the emails. You feel reactive. You feel doubt, worry. At the end of the day, when you have these conversations, it would go something like this. I realize that the definite chief aim is mine. I'm able to create the success that I want. I'm able to achieve the $120,000 end result goal for my business. Why is it that I feel doubt and fear regarding reaching out to prospects and having conversations with them? Is it because I don't believe that my product or service is needed and useful? Upon reflection, have a conversation with yourself a little deeper on those elements, you realize that it is needed and useful. You then say to yourself, why is it that I can't make the offer then? Why is it I'm still afraid to reach out to them? You might then, as you have the conversation carry on within yourself, realize that you don't see giving and receiving as one. Perhaps you learned some programming back in the days that says it's better to give than receive, and thus, as a result of identifying with that programming, you don't allow yourself to receive. So you realize through self-talk that giving and receiving is one. The outer world's a reflection of the inner world. You create value 
as far as product or service, and they pay you in whatever compensation form that you'd like, and that's giving and receiving seen as one. You continue to have this conversation, and you start to feel like you are listening to yourself more, trusting yourself more. And then you notice that the next day, your behaviors have changed, your thoughts have changed, your emotions have changed, and even outer world circumstances and opportunities show up that weren't there before or weren't within your awareness before. This is how you know you've had successful self-talk to evolve programming within yourself that is not in alignment. As a result of doing this, your self-confidence and your self-esteem increases. You also have a greater relationship with your subconscious mind, something that I talk about a lot. One of the reasons why we want to engage in this kind of mindful self-talk, spirit of harmony-based conversations with ourselves is so that we can build a greater relationship with our subconscious mind. Because what has been manifest as a result of what we experience, the reactivity is past programming from our subconscious mind. And we're not shaming ourselves, but rather understanding ourselves and evolving through conversations with ourselves. And as a result of doing this, you also get the action items. Perhaps it's subconscious mind audio texts that you get, or perhaps it's different action items that you can take, or you might even notice your behaviors being different as a result of having these evolved self-talk conversations. So again, to review my process, you've got to have a definite chief aim or a goal so you can see the contrast. Because it's not just about creating your definite chief aim, but who you become in the journey and what you reveal about yourself on the journey, which is externalized on the bridge of incidents. We would then want to impress the definite chief aim on our subconscious mind so that the subconscious mind presents itself, creates the outcome, and also reveals what's within ourselves so we can evolve the programming within. We observe and write down what we are reactive to using the emotional guidance scale. And at the end of the day, we review the aspects. We reflect back on the Robert Diltz model because it helps us categorize. It's easier for the mind to conceptualize and categorize where we can have these conversations about. What do we need to evolve within? And then we go through the process of self-talk. Now what you'll notice is as you do this, this will become an automatic process. This is a very streamlined, step-by-step formula that I have used and that I've developed as a result of applying self-talk, which really began for me more so, I was always doing this mindfully and really accelerated, I would say, after I read How to Be Your Own Best Friend, which I did a discussion on. I'll put a link in the description. So I trust you'll find this process to be very useful and beneficial. So I want to share this with you. And if you want a copy of this mind map, I'll put a link in the description. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.